It's not necessary to poke fun at anyone who's speaking from the heart in the public arena, in my opinion. But it is necessary to analyze what's being said. It's not often that I agree with Bill O'Reilly, but he hit the nail on the head. Let's analyze exactly what was being said and tossed around last week in our free society. <laughs> Looking for some feedback from this week's Say What? I really am. And the reason? I'm confused. Am I seeing and hearing something that is misogynistic or sexist or racist or a little of all three? Seriously. These events all happened last week, and I want to know if this is me overreacting or a sign of what is acceptable in today's world. Let me show you. This is Vice President Mike Pence speaking at the Women's Empowerment Panel on March 29th. He talked about the importance of women in the workplace and how President Trump has relied on women throughout his career. He even dropped this nugget. President Trump and our administration, I promise you, are going to work tirelessly to empower women to be able to climb the ladder of opportunity and contribute even more to America's success in the years ahead. He received a rousing round of applause throughout his speech. Women good, great opportunities, all fine and dandy until the very next day. The Senate being equally divided, the Vice President votes in the affirmative and the joint resolution is passed. That's when he broke a tie in the Senate to repeal a health and human services rule on family planning funding, basically defunding Planned Parenthood. Not unexpected, but pretty hypocritical of a man talking about empowering women one day then taking away their power to choose the next. Now I get it, it's a pro-life party that's in power right now. But that doesn't explain this strange statement from Iowa State Congresswoman Shannon Lundgren during a debate on banning abortion after 20 weeks in that state. Under this legislation, she would have to carry that baby. In that instance, if your daughter's life is not in danger, then yes, she would have to carry that baby. If you're confused, she basically just said a woman who was miscarried should carry a dead fetus to term, unless the life of the mother was in danger. She's under fire for that remark, as are Bill O'Reilly and Sean Spicer, after statements about and to black women last week. I didn't hear a word she said. I was, I was looking at the James Brown wig. <laughs> Asking me a question, and I'm going to answer it, which is the president, I'm sorry, please stop shaking your head again. O'Reilly was obviously trying to be cute, but he came off as a bit of a sexist, not shocking considering his past. As for Spicer, I just think he gets frustrated having to answer some tough questions. Would he have talked down to another reporter other than April Ryan? Hmm, possibly. Maybe it's not women at all that are the target. Maybe people just think they can be as bigoted as they want and say and tweet anything with no repercussions. Check out former Congressman Joe Walsh backtracking on a clearly discriminatory tweet. We elected our first black president. That was a big deal. And because of that, we lowered the standard. And that is let what makes answer, you a bigot, Let me Joe. answer, No, Angela, but that's what makes you a Angela bigot. Oh my gosh. Obama and okay. not be a racist. Okay. Oh my gosh is right. Five separate people saying five separate things. So all can be judged differently depending on who you're talking with. So I ask you again to get involved in this conversation. Are we being oversensitive or are people showing their true colors because they think it's acceptable now? I'm open for discussion if you are. Well, we've had a beautiful day of it today across East Texas and things remain pretty much the same now. Let's look outside right now in Tyler, 78 degrees southwest winds and that relative humidity is very low. It makes it feel more comfortable. Well, we check the water vapor satellite loop because this shows where our next systems are coming from and the next one is moving in from the west coast now. This time it's going to track a little farther to the north, so instead of having the severe weather like we've had the past uh, few systems, this one will maybe bring us some showers and possibly a thunderstorm, but severe weather is not in the cards for East Texas, at least not this time around. Well, we are cleared out today, had lots of sunshine, and the temperatures uh, did warm up just a bit. Now tomorrow there will be a possibility of some severe storms, but they'll be to the north and to the east and nothing expected in East Texas. Here's your next seven days, slight chance of some showers and perhaps a thunderstorm late late Tuesday night, early Wednesday. Otherwise, sunshine through the rest of the week, and we'll have a slight chance of some thunderstorms early next week. Brian? Thanks, John. Looks good. Well, kind of good. All right. Generations of gamblers have tried their luck at the slot machine. Now casinos are betting on a new type of gambling game to attract millennials. Here's producer John Burley. 
Virtually unchanged since the late 1800s, the old one-arm bandit is the iconic cornerstone of casino gambling. Play is simple and straightforward. But for those of us who've been raised on a steady diet of sophisticated graphics and interactive gameplay, these machines are going the way of the dinosaur. So in an attempt to stay relevant, the gaming industry is taking a gamble on new innovations to separate millennials from their hard-earned cash. And the perspective jackpot is huge. In a sea of slot machines, this game stands out in Atlantic City. Danger Arena is the world's first skill-based gambling video game. 21-year-old Vinny Santana gravitated toward the joystick. I'm surprised. I mean, there's something that even came into existence like this. This is awesome. Casinos are trying to hit the jackpot with the next generation. The Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority reports the number of visitors ages 20 to 39 dropped from 18.1 million in 2014 to 14.4 million in 2015. They do need to innovate the experience and entertainment. Genko CEO Blaine Grabois is designing these games specifically for casinos. I think that uh, millennials and uh, younger customers in general, we grew up playing video games and video games are interactive and engaging in a way that slot machines just don't provide for that audience. The more skilled the player, the better the chance of winning but it's also sort of a graphic novel that gives the story and characters in the game. Is this what makes it more interesting? Absolutely. Story and character is really important to gamers. The prize is $7.20. Another company, Gamblet, is betting games that make the casino experience more social will attract younger people. CEO Eric Meyerhofer describes how this speed of poker game works. It's super competitive and super focused. It's literally how fast you can twitch to take a card so you have acuity and dexterity at work. Uh -huh. okay. The company will unveil hundreds of new machines in Las Vegas this year. Win or lose, they want millennials to come back for more. I would definitely play this again. Listen up, parents. Locking up the liquor cabinet may be just the beginning. You may want to think twice before getting your kids that new Xbox or PlayStation. For The Edge, I'm producer John Burnley. Crazy stuff. Oh, man. I'm going to stick with Clash of Clans. The wall is a step closer to reality with a border deadline tomorrow. Now residents are worried they will end up between a border and a hard place. We would be on the wrong side of the wall. That's all you can say. And are you allowed to live on the wrong side of the wall? No, no. That's the next question. The countdown for prototypes is underway. A report by our border correspondent coming up. The deadline to submit prototypes for President Trump's border wall is tomorrow afternoon at 3 o'clock. Our border correspondent, Oscar Margain, found members of a retirement community in South Texas fearing they could end up south of the wall. This golf resort and retirement community in Brownsville, Texas, lies on the banks of the Rio Grande River. As the numbers of illegal immigrants skyrocket. A meeting is happening here between Border Patrol and border landowners. I'm glad to see these meetings happen. Once a month, both sides get together to discuss issues. Will there be gates where there are no gates right now? About their property and border security. Who better than them that, that are on their property uh, as much as we are uh, to let us know if they see something uh, that maybe we're not aware of uh, so that we can try to uh, address any concerns that they might have. The trending topic these days, the border wall and the impact it could have on neighbors here in this valley. There's, there's a problem somewhere. Residents in this retirement community worry they'll end up stuck between the border and a hard place. We would be on the wrong side of the wall. That's all you can say. And are you allowed to live on the wrong side of the wall? No, no. That's the next question. Many people here enjoy peace and tranquility thanks to constant boots on the ground and crime-fighting technology. 
they don't think a wall is necessary for this stretch of the border. That's Mexico over there. Riverbend property manager Jeremy Barnard expects the wall to be built on this levee that runs through his family's land spanning more than 300 acres. These residents would be cut off from these residents and the river, the actual boundary, is a mile that way. The resort sits in a gap between existing border fence. When the Barnard family bought the property in 2015, they quickly realized it was being used as a smuggling corridor and worked with border patrol agents to secure the area. We realize there's something that needs to be done. The question is now, how do we help solve that issue without affecting our business? The Barnard family realizes the government could seize the land through eminent domain. They hope the feds will come to the table and start a dialogue with them before purchasing any land. We would love to have this conversation tomorrow and get it sorted out. And until a version of President Trump's wall is finalized, everyone is waiting for clear answers. Bernard has extended an invitation to President Trump to come golf with him. He believes they can both find common ground. After all, they're both businessmen who own golf resorts, and they both want border security. In Brownsville, on the Texas-Mexico border, Oscar Margain reporting. Nice shot, Oscar. If you would like to read more about the wall construction, we have a recommendation from USA Today. You'll find out which companies would most likely work on the wall, how long it may take to build, the cost, what it may look like, and a lot more. And feel free to give us a recommendation we should share with East Texas. We love them. You can always get our attention. Just find the hashtag Edge Nation. Tonight, another heartwarming story about a cool dad. I'm definitely a better dad because I include my kids in my activities, in my passions. <laughs> find out what inspires this guy to try and crush world records with his family. Right by his side, it's another of producer Libby's favorites. Stick around. Born when the kids are old enough, we're going to teach them to fly. You and me together. KYTX CBS 19 Weather and Weather App are brought to you by Texas Spine and Joint Urgent Care. The best step to better health. Nice shot. Good job, guys. We often hear about parents pushing their kids into sports for all the wrong reasons, but tonight a parent literally pushing and making it a family affair. This is a cool story here. Here's Jason Bristol from our Houston station. When he goes for a run, Cal Neff rarely goes it. You see the flowers, Holly? Alone. Cool. His pint-sized partner is Holly, his two-year-old daughter. She is such a good rider, and he is such a great racer. Cal currently owns the world record for running the fastest half marathon ever. Holly held in there for an hour and 11 minutes. While pushing a stroller. So yeah, last year, our KD half marathon, we ended up running about 528 per mile for 13.1 miles. Now, for anyone, including Cal, who's 32 and was all conference in college, that is a huge accomplishment. Uh, the previous record was 113. But for him, it also presents a small problem. Ready to go? Yeah. All right. All right. What to do about his other daughter? Yeah, I didn't want to uh, have that dynamic of the younger sister having a world record. And the older one not having one. So, with some encouragement. Daddy, faster, faster. Or demands. Daddy, fast, faster, faster. From Allie, his four-year-old, Cal, eight months later, set another stroller world record, this time in the full marathon. And we ended up running two hours and 31 minutes. And Allie just loved it. Allie, you wanna go running? And now, More? what's next for Cal and his wife, who by the way is not a runner. He should push me in the stroller. <laughs> So, oh, you want so to be in the, the stroller? Oh, yeah. I thought maybe you could be behind the stroller running as well. No, no. But even better, they now have a third child, another girl born just a few days ago. I'm going to have to think up a third record. Thankfully, Cal still has time to figure it out. After all, time 
It's what this is all about, spending as much as you can with your kids. I'm definitely a better dad because I include my kids in my activities, in my passions. Easy to see why this is the greatest run of Cal Neff's life. Plus, he did like the whole interview short of breath. Pretty cool. What a run for him. Here's what he could be doing for a third record. He has a sister who is having a baby, so he may attempt a double stroke. Wow, pretty awesome. Well, in an age when many bookstores are struggling, a unique move in Dallas to keep them alive. It's called lit bait, as in literature bait. We tricked you into come here. Now you have the book here. Have a look. <laughs> the slogan, you fell for the bait, now fall for the book. How provocative posts are getting people to read again in two ticks. It catches our eye, a tempting headline, an inviting image. You don't have to scroll far through Facebook to find clickbait. But a bookstore in Dallas, Bishop Arts, is doing something different with it. Here's Jason Whiteley. The neighborhood has successfully set itself apart. But there is a bookstore in Bishop Arts now getting international attention. In one week, we got CNN, then it was BBC. BBC was just like, boom, like everywhere. The Wild Detectives on West 8th just celebrated its third birthday. An independent bookstore with a bar and a novel idea. We tricked you into come here, now you have the book here, have a look. They fool Facebook users into reading it. Call it clickbait to the classics. Here's an example of a headline. New synthetic drug is turning Londoners into violent maniacs. That links to Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And this Italian politician makes Trump look like a saint. That goes to The Prince by Machiavelli. Romanian man discovers shocking fact about garlic. That's Dracula. The slogan is, you fell for the bait, now fall for the book. It's called lit bait. Lit like literature. This campaign was just for September, but it has taken off recently, even made international news and increased web traffic to the store's site by 14,000%. Teenage girl tricked boyfriend into killing himself. Romeo and Juliet is behind that one. In an age when many bookstores are struggling and so much time is squandered online, Wild Detectives is onto something using provocative posts to return people to reading. I don't know about that one. I don't know about that one. Sure, people are reading, but it's pretty shady. All right. Tongues are literally wagging over this Guinness World Record attempt. See what we mean in two minutes. No clickbait. Promise. Before we go, a story from our Don't Try This at Home or You Might Cut Off Your Tongue file. Yeah, Zoe Ellis appeared on the Guinness World Records Italian show, beating her own world record, stopping electric fan blades with her tongue. She did it 32 times in 60 seconds. Look. One, go. If you can stop a fan blade with your tongue, stop. Or if you can break any other records for that matter, prove it. Send us a video. Just head to our Twitter page at the Edge CBS 19. No way. No way ever. Don't try that at home. I'll repeat it. That's a wrap for me, producer Libby, and the entire Edge Nation crew. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow, same time, same Edge place. And we're just not the other men. I'm tired of mocking around, so.